Today, America's Navy operates three different types of submarines, each with their own roles within the nation's defense apparatus. Attack subs are the apex predators of the sea, prowling the depths for other submarines and generally haunting the nightmares of surface ship captains. Guided missile submarines each carry as many as 154 Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles with berthing space designed to accommodate as many as 66 Navy SEALs for covert operations deep behind enemy lines. And then there's the Boomers, or Ballistic Missile Submarines. These hulking monsters of the deep operate alone and unafraid, hiding in the murky depths for months at a time with only one mission to deter nuclear conflict, or failing that, to end the world through overwhelming nuclear firepower. At any given point, a full half of America's deployed nuclear arsenal is housed within the launch cells of just 14 Ohio-class ballistic missile subs. But now, after more than four decades of standing their posts at the precipice of humanity's destruction, these world-ending behemoths are finally being believed by a new generation of ballistic missile sub, the largest and stealthiest American submarines ever put to sea. And once all 12 of these subs are in service, they'll carry a whopping 70% of America's deployed nuclear stockpile. To put it plainly, America's new Columbia-class subs are being designed and built with the same singular purpose as their predecessors, to save the world by threatening to end it. So let's talk about the U.S. Navy's new class of boomers, why they're currently delayed, and why nuclear Armageddon isn't cheap. I'm Alex Hollings, and welcome to Sea Power. Since the heyday of the Cold War, the U.S. has sought to distribute its deployed nuclear warheads across at least three delivery methods that we commonly call the nuclear triad. The triad, of course, being from air, from land, and from sea. Now, the airborne leg of the nuclear triad consists of strategic bombers and even a variety of fighters, all equipped to carry B-83 or B-61 series nuclear gravity bombs or standoff weapons, like the AGM-86 nuclear air-launched cruise missile. The land-based leg of the triad, of course, consists of hundreds of nuclear-armed Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles, positioned in hardened underground silos across the American Midwest. That is, until the Minuteman III arsenal is replaced by the new Sentinel ICBMs. Now, both of these legs of the triad play a vital role in America's nuclear deterrence strategy, but when it comes to sheer firepower, neither holds a nuclear candle to the nation's 14 Ohio-class ballistic missile subs. These undersea monsters operate in remote waters untethered by direct command oversight outside of simple text-based messages transmitted via vast VLF or very low-frequency antennas stretched across dozens of miles and a handful of shoreline facilities around the world. Stretching 560 feet from bow to stern, the Ohio class would tower over the Statue of Liberty if you stood it on its tail. And with a displacement of more than 20,000 tons while submerged, it outweighs even some World War II battleships. And of course, in terms of sheer combat power, there is not a single ship in the history of this planet that can boast a more destructive armament. In fact, if you were to fully arm just one of these subs with a maximum nuclear loadout in terms of deployed weapons, it alone would qualify as the world's fifth largest nuclear power. But the sea is an unforgiving domain, and America's adversaries haven't been sitting idly by throughout the Ohio class's reign. Russia's conventional military forces may have atrophied significantly since the fall of the Soviet Union, but their submarine fleet has remained a significant area of both focus and investment throughout. Despite sanctions and the nation's financial hardships, independent analysis of Russia's 64 in-service subs suggest the Russian Navy's Bore-class boomers, or ballistic missile subs, are among the stealthiest in the world, and the even newer Bore K class that are armed with conventional cruise missiles may be even harder to detect. 
And maybe more concerning are Russia's newest Yasin class attack submarines, which are said to be on par with America's nuclear Virginia class attack subs and would be the vessels tasked with hunting American boomers down in the event of war. Now, China's submarine force, on the other hand, has historically lagged behind its Russian and American counterparts. But in keeping with Xi Jinping's sweeping military modernization efforts, that assessment is pretty quickly becoming outdated. China's shipbuilding industry absolutely dominates the global market. And while China's Type 094 ballistic missile subs are generally considered to be a lot easier to detect than America's, Satellite imagery of Chinese shipyards in recent years has revealed several advanced new submarine designs that are already in active development, potentially closing some portion of the capability gap between Chinese and American subforces and making the whole world seas just a bit more dangerous. Put simply, the U.S. can no longer trust the largest portion of its deployed nuclear arsenal to submarine designs that were largely finalized before the first Star Wars movie hit theaters, no matter how well they may have aged since then. And that really comes as no surprise to the U.S. Navy, who's placed the Columbia-class submarine program at the very top of their acquisition priority list since 2013. These new boomers will be the largest subs America has ever built, just inching out the Ohio's and stretching 560 feet long with a 430-foot beam and a displacement of a whopping 20,810 tons. These submarines are built to accommodate 155 sailors and will be equipped with a larger and even more advanced version of the Virginia-class attack subs onboard sensor suite, including a new large aperture bow sonar and stem area systems for improved situational awareness and surveillance and reconnaissance duties. Now, Navy doctrine calls for maintaining 10 operational ballistic missile submarines at all times, and that required 14 Ohio-class vessels because of their lengthy midlife nuclear refueling and system overhauls. That regularly keeps each sub out of the fight for as long as four years at a time. The Columbia classes, new nuclear core, on the other hand, won't ever need to be refueled throughout its 42-year lifespan, cutting that midlife upgrade time in half and allowing for more operational ships at any given point. And as a result, the Navy says they'll only need 12 Columbia-class boomers to replace 14 outgoing Ohio's. Likewise, each of these Columbia-class subs will carry fewer submarine-launched ballistic missiles, or SLBMs than the Ohio's that they replace. The Ohio class was originally fielded with 24 SLBM launch tubes, but saw that number reduced to just 20 as a part of the new START agreement with Russia back in the mid-2010s. The Columbia class, while larger than the Ohio, will see that number reduced again to just 16 Trident II SLBMs, and a decision that was absolutely driven by cost, but Navy officials say that the modernized Trident II, the D5LE, or lifetime extension introduced back in 2017, provides sufficient accuracy and redundancy to accomplish the Navy's nuclear mission without the need for any additional weapons. Now, the Navy says that each Trident II SLBM offers a range of more than 4,000 nautical miles, but documentation revealed by American allies in the UK, who operate the same missiles in their own submarines, revealed the weapon's maximum range is actually closer to 7,500 miles instead, which is perfectly in keeping with the United States' common approach to understating weapon capabilities. But it is also worth noting that carrying larger warheads or a higher number of them would see the maximum range of these weapons reduced. And with that in mind, these missiles are said to be able to carry as many as 14 100 kiloton W-76 independently targeted warheads, or as many as eight larger 475 kiloton W-88s, all of which can close with their targets at speeds in excess of Mach 24. Now that gives each individual missile a maximum nuclear yield of between 1.4 and 3.8 
megatons, or between 90 and 253 times the destructive capacity of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima back in 1945. But it's important to note that it's been reported that the U.S. Navy actually usually arms its Trident II's with just four to five warheads per weapon for a total of 80 to 100 individual targets per submarine. Now that means the new Columbia class could actually deliver that same nuclear payload by just increasing the number of warheads per weapon to six or seven, while dramatically reducing the construction and the weapon maintenance costs associated with these missiles. Now, the Columbia class will house these weapons in modules called common missile compartments, each of which can carry four weapons internally. Now, these compartments were designed in a joint effort with the U.S. and the British Royal Navy, with Columbia class subs carrying four of these four missile compartments for a total of 16 SLBMs, and the Royal Navy's new Vanguard class subs each carrying three compartments for a total of 12 missiles. Now, the stealth technologies brought to bear by the Columbia class are still mostly classified, but we know that these subs leverage advancements made throughout the Virginia class attack submarine program that put its first sub into service back in 2004, but then expands upon them, switching to a new turbo electric drive with a pump jet propulsor system that's charged via the sub's onboard nuclear reactor rather than the slightly louder steam turbine-driven mechanical propulsion you'd find in earlier American subs. Now, this is said to make the Columbia class among, if not the, quietest submarine ever built, and far more difficult for adversaries to find as it traverses open waterways with virtually unlimited range. All told, the Columbia class promises to propel America's most resilient leg of its nuclear triad straight into the 21st century, with improved stealth, widespread automation, increased survivability, reduced maintenance requirements, and enough onboard firepower to rain hell on any target, anywhere, at any time. But before it can do any of that, the namesake of the class, the USS District of Columbia, still has some pretty significant hurdles to overcome. Now, earlier this month, Navy officials testified to Congress about the ongoing delays with the Columbia-class program, which has now pushed the first sub's delivery date back by a solid 18 months to 2029. Now, USNI News has reported that these delays are mostly tied to supplier issues and manufacturer delays from the separate subcomponents that will equip these new subs, including steam turbines being built by Northrop Grumman for electrical power production and the bow assembly being built by Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia. Now, these sorts of issues are, to be honest, increasingly prevalent across the breadth of American shipbuilding. And the Navy says efforts are underway to mitigate the impact of these ongoing delays. So if all goes well, the USS District of Columbia will be joined by the USS Wisconsin, which is already under construction in 2032, and then the USS Groton by 2034. But the Government Accountability Office is not convinced, and they are characteristically pessimistic about this timeline, highlighting how American submarine construction has failed to meet its targets in 2022, 2023, and 2024, with no signs of that trend changing in 2025. Of course, America's shipbuilding woes are more than worthy of a video of their own. So for now, let's leave it at that. America's powerful new Columbia-class subs promise to be the most capable and dangerous warships ever to sail the seven seas, but the Columbia's reign over the ocean's depths now won't begin until at least the end of this decade. And with that ends yet another edition of Sea Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news entertainment and now merch from all around the forks. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.